Don, these types of cases that Mike is referring to, you know, people who, who basically uh, they were exposed by uh, by what transpired in part through the uh, <coughs> confession program, but in other kinds of investigations of the Chinese community. Did you see cases that resulted from that kind of uh, inquiry? Yeah, I, I saw a few, but I, I started practicing in 1962 here in San Francisco, and that was more or less the tail end of the um, Chinese confession program. One couple of incidents I do remember in particular in that, Judge Justice Lowe was talking about the anti-red hysteria that was going on at the time. The FBI that got into some of these cases would try to pressure some of the Chinese people into becoming informants in the community. And the threat against them, of course, was potential deportation and revealing their true identities. Um, it was also, as uh, Mike was talking about, the idea of people being fearful of confessing, not only for themselves, but implicating other people because once they started to confess, they had to tell on others, and that was just an extremely difficult time. I think the, the saving grace at that point was that nobody was being deported to China because we didn't recognize communist China at the time. And so that was one of the impetus for people to come in and confess mm -hmm. because even though there was no guarantee about things, the matter of fact was nobody was going to be deported. And there were many Chinese people, of course, particularly those who served in the armed forces during World War II who legitimately could become American citizens as a result. The consulate and then come back. Turn right around and come they back. could adjust. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was true. Right. So Michael, you know, when you were at, um, I followed Michael to Berkeley and I followed him to San Francisco Neighborhood Legal Assistance Foundation. Uh, there were a, 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 there was a backlog of Chinese who were eligible for benefits but somehow we're not getting the benefits. What, so what did you do? Yeah, when I was a young legal aid uh, attorney uh, in the early 1970s, we got wind of the fact that there were uh, people who came in, or came to the attention of the Immigration Service through the confession program, either voluntarily or involuntarily. And they were in the pipeline. Some of them actually qualified for benefits, but the Immigration Service had uh, decided these are very low priority cases, so nothing was happening to them. So we uh, sort of looked into it, and um, actually it was such a wide, an eye opener because, you know, despite the fact that we these things had these things had touched our lives, I wasn't aware of the law and the implications of all these things. And when we found out about the confession program, at first it sounded good, and then we realized, you know, this is uh, playing with fire, and that you're really creating some hardships to other people uh, sometimes uh, by creating, uh, trying to create a benefit for yourself. So, you know, we stepped pretty, very carefully, set it carefully, and what we were trying to do is not kickstart the confession program after we found out some of its pitfalls, but we were trying to get the immigration service to give a higher priority to the processing of some of these people so that they can become lawful residents and then citizens and then, you know, start pro uh, sponsoring some of their other uh, relatives uh, legally. And um, we filed a petition in this court. Um, I forget who the, the judge was so long ago. And um, the Immigration Service did come in and say, all right, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and start processing those. I left at about that time. But I think that uh, Bill uh, came to the office and, and he was involved in some of the processing of those cases. One of the things that did happen in 1962 was an amendment to the Immigration Act itself, which created a more liberal provision for suspension of deportation. That allowed people to qualify for legal residence as well. But even so, like I said, the Immigration Service just wasn't moving on those uh, cases. 